In today's video, we're breaking down vehicles for another Blue 4 faction and the British Armed Forces. We're going to take a look at each vehicle, and we're also going to listen to how they sound so you can make solid callouts for your team, along with covering basic capabilities and armaments for each vehicle. And since the British have so many tracked vehicles, this should help you not call everything a tank. So hit the subscribe button so you can get notified of future videos in this series, and be sure to leave a comment down below with thoughts for future videos. And as a reminder, I want to go ahead and make sure that you are aware that you can check for vehicles on each given layer that you play in squad. You can find this information by hitting caps lock and going to the vehicle icon in the top right of your map. This will give you a breakdown of all the vehicles available to either team during that round. It'll also tell you the ticket value of each vehicle along with whether or not they're amphibious. The British Armed Forces come with a tank of their own, being the FV4034, or better known as the Challenger. While sporting a 120mm rifled gun, the Challenger comes with 25 rounds of armor-piercing Sabo, 16 rounds of high-explosive shells, and 6 rounds of white phosphorus smoke. It has a 7.62 coax, smoke launchers as countermeasures, and what's considered a loader's remote-controlled MG and a 7.62 machine gun. Unlike the Abrams, the Challenger sports a diesel engine, which is still notable to hear on the battlefield. The Challenger comes in two solid camo patterns, being desert and woodland. Most tanks are going to sound similar in terms of how they fire, but take a listen to the Challenger. Like I mentioned, the British Armed Forces have a bunch of tracked vehicles. So let's start breaking these down, beginning with the FV520, or better known as the CTAS. The CTAS is in a similar category like the BMP2, the Bradley, and the ZBD, all being tracked infantry fighting vehicles or IFEs. The CTAS sports a 40mm auto cannon with 80 rounds of AP and 80 rounds of HE shells. The CTAS can support a crew of up to three, including a commander with nine additional passengers and 600 ammo points. So let's first take a listen to the CTAS engine. fighting the CTAS and a Challenger on the same layer. So here's a comparison of the Challenger engine so you can tell the difference. So from that, you can probably tell the Challenger has a little bit of a deeper tone, whereas the CTAS sounds much louder. It has a little bit of a higher pitch. The CTAS also sports two solid camo patterns in the desert and woodland option. Most of the British armor is magazine based. However, the CTAS can fire pretty fast, similar to a BMP2. Let's take a quick listen. While the CTAS's 40mm cannon can shoot at a crazy pace, the Warrior's 30mm cannon is actually much slower and is magazine based. And probably one of the most common mix-ups for British armor is the difference between the CTAS and the Warrior. Now you have two types of Warrior. One is the FV510 and one is the FV510UA. The UA stands for Up Armored. And that version comes with additional armor, especially in the metal side panels that look similar to a CTAS. Instead of the CTAS's 40mm cannon, this comes with a 30mm cannon. Unlike the CTAS, the Warrior is magazine-based, meaning you're going to be shooting and reloading the main gun. It does come with AP rounds, HE rounds, along with a 7.62 coax and smoke launchers for countermeasures. But the gunner has no stabilization, making this a little bit harder to operate. Typically, the warrior operates with up to a crew of three and can carry up to 10 passengers and 600 ammo points for fobs and infantry resupply. 
Now the CTAS is considered an upgraded version of the Warrior, so you're going to have basically the same engine sound. But here's a listen to the Warrior just so you're aware. You may not be able to tell the difference between the audio of the engines of both the CTAS and the Warrior, however you can tell a difference by how they fire and their fire rate. Take a listen. So visually, how do you tell the difference between the Warrior and the CTAS? Well, first of all, we know the up armored version of the Warrior is going to look closer to the CTAS because of the side panels. So if it doesn't have side panels, you're definitely dealing with a Warrior. If it does have the side panels, look to the turret size because that's probably the most notable difference. Because the CTAS turret is much more robust. It is larger on top of the same chassis. So that's how you can tell the difference visually on top of having audio from how it fires and the fire rate itself. And just like the CTAS and other British vehicles, the Warrior comes in two solid camo patterns. And there's one other British vehicle that has at least one similarity to these two. And that is the FV-107 Scimitar. The Scimitar possesses the same main turret as the Warrior, so you're not going to really hear a sound difference in terms of how it fires. However, you can probably clearly tell that the scale of the vehicles are vastly different. Much like the Warrior, it is magazine-based and it's going to carry less ammunition, but you still get armor-piercing rounds, high-explosive rounds, a coax of 7.62, and a smoke launcher as a countermeasure. You do still get 600 ammo points, and the vehicle can be operated with a crew of up to two or three. Unfortunately, the main gun does not have stabilization similar to the Warrior. However, it does have some speed. Take a listen to the engine. The Scimitar comes in two solid camo patterns, being desert and woodland. Another vehicle you may catch on the battlefield is the FE-432 Bulldog. There are two variations of the Bulldog. One is an RWS with a light machine gun mounted on top that is remote controlled by an operator inside. The benefit of the open top version where someone will actually have to man it outside of the vehicle is that that gun is a 50 caliber machine gun. Now, if you're trying to tell a difference between what vehicle is coming up towards you on the battlefield, the Bulldog is going to sound different from both the Warrior and the CTAS. Take a listen to the engine here. Now here is generally what the Warrior and the CTAS both sound like. While you get two variations with the Bulldog and the Open Top and the RWS, you also have two different camo patterns that both of these variations come in in Desert and Woodland. Now keep in mind the Bulldog only has a 50 cal or a light machine gun mounted on top, so it's not going to have a turret like the Warrior or the CTAS. So there's another distinction that you'll hear via audio if they are firing. The RWS version, because it's a 7.62, is going to sound exactly the same as the Challenger's 7.62 loader gun. But you're going to have a different tone with the Open Top, being that it's a 50 cal. Take a listen. Now that we've gone through all the tracked vehicles for the British Armed Forces, let's start talking about some of their light vehicles. The British faction operates the LPPV, which comes in two variants, including an RWS version and just your standard LPPV. The RWS version features a 50 caliber machine gun similar to a Bulldog, whereas the standard LPPV operates two 7.62 machine guns mounted on the roof of the vehicle. Each of these variations can hold up to six people and carry 300 ammo points for resupplying infantry or fobs. The LPPV only features light armor to help protect against small arms fire. However, the windshield is often considered a weak spot against heavier weapons. And much like the Australian vehicles, if you're looking at the front of the vehicle, the driver is going to be on the left side. Let's take a listen to the engine so you know when it's on the battlefield.
Now, in terms of how it sounds when it fires, you do have a 762, which is similar to the 762s we already heard on the Challenger. And then you have the 50 cal, which is similar to what you've already heard on the Bulldog. Like the Australian faction, the British also sport the HX-60 general purpose vehicle, which comes in two variations, one being a transport and then one being a logistics vehicle. The transportation version of the vehicle can hold up to 16 people and 300 ammo points to resupply infantry and fobs. The logistics version of the vehicle can hold up to 10 people and 3,000 logistics points, including either ammo or build supply. You can tell the difference in the vehicles by the fact that the logistics version typically has ammo boxes and supply crates in the back. And only the logistics version of this vehicle is capable of setting down radios for fobs. Both of these vehicles feature basically no armor and are susceptible to light arms fire and have no main armament on board. Let's listen to what the engine sounds like. The HX-60 comes in two solid camo patterns for desert and woodland. Additionally, if you're looking at the vehicle, the driver will be sitting on the left side. The British Army also sport their own helicopter in the SA-330. Much like any other helicopter, you do need a pilot on board to operate. However, it can also hold up to 12 people, including two door gunners on either side of the vehicle. The SA-330 also carries 1,200 supply, which can be split between ammo and build. They can be used to resupply fobs or create new ones. I personally think the SA-330 has a pretty unique sound. Take a listen. Now that we've gone through all the British faction vehicles, I want to remind everyone that we're working on videos that are going to feature every faction. So be sure to be on the lookout for future videos in this series, as well as making sure you hit the subscribe button down below so you can get updates on when those come out. Be sure to like the video, leave comments down below with your thoughts on the British Armed Forces, and I'll catch you guys next time.